Welcome to Investors Hangout, brought to you by Ditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Are 15 funds better than 5 or 5 better than 15? Is higher number detrimental or good for your growth? Should you be cutting the flab and uh, creating a lean portfolio that delivers? Well, all these questions will be answered by the CEO of Value Research, Dhirendra Kumar. Dhirendra, we welcome you. Thank you. The first uh, question uh, from the genesis from where this problem starts, why do people have too many funds? Oh, new funds are launched with great fanfare. And then existing open-end funds, you know, sometimes some fund does well and investors think that you know they have they need to add to it something else is doing well investors get quite attracted mm. by you know recent past performance something which has done very well everybody wants to have a small part of it so variety of reason the hype around new funds uh, and normally mm. these these things happen when the market is doing well something which has done very well in recent past it will be uh, you know sold by a large sales force mm. which is inter incentivized mm. to do it uh, people really buy into uh, research and if your the fund which you are investing in has not done as well you think you have missed out on something yeah, yeah. so you end up being a collector rather than being an investor and uh, it is not a concerted thing so at many yeah. times i find that you know people have very inappropriate fund and a wide variety of fund and uh, then it becomes unmanageable there are numerous you know uh, so primarily people get attracted by the hype and become a collector than remaining an investor and in also a focused the new way. fund offer that yeah, they yeah. have primarily new fund primarily offers, yeah. yeah okay and even the friends come and says okay you must buy <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> yeah this is the, you know this is an offer yes uh, I'm, will i miss out on something so hmm. yeah okay so my question is that what's wrong in having too many funds uh the couple of things one is that you know one should be guided by one's goal so it, the appropriateness of a fund is very important not okay. something which is an offer uh, then lack of simplicity uh, when you have too many funds uh, you, uh, lack of simplicity lack of focus so what happens is when something is not doing well hmm. you don't worry about it because it you don't have much interest there so lack of interest uh, so I think you know one should look at why you buy a fund you buy a fund to gain diversification professional management and appropriateness okay. is the important thing not what is what is hot selling right now or what what looks attractive Correct. right mm. now and that goal is met with far simpler th fewer things once you do that be at it i think you know the critical component of an investor's goals being achieved is being in a concerted way on a plan with the appropriate vehicle and not getting distracted it violates this rule these rules mm. lack of simplicity having the focus Can I tell being interested okay lack of simplicity means lack of monitoring uh, no you don't have a plan okay. uh, when you when you know that okay this is these funds are meant for my retirement and mm -hmm. I'm at these three funds and I'm investing regularly and I'll be reviewing it every mm. two years and make changes accordingly mm. uh, when you have 15 of them lack of interest that I think is critical when you have you know assuming that okay. you have 10 lakh rupees and it is spread over 20 funds when something is not doing well you won't be bothered that okay yeah. a very small part of it is there once you have some meaningful interest uh, you'll better you know uh, review it look at it closely take some action when it's needed otherwise you know uh, it just drifts and uh, I think the other crucial thing which I would like you know it's simply uneconomical because most investors buy mutual fund for uh, you know mutual funds uh, the, the dominance of mm. actively managed fund where you are effectively hiring a fund manager to manage your money and when you are hiring a fund manager to manage your money by having these too many funds which some you know by the very uh, you know by the design of you know law of averages some will do exceptionally well a good number will be average and a small number will be poor and uh, you end up being average and when you end up being average and you are right. actually paying for beating the average uh, might as well go with an index fund why go for an actively managed fund which costs you so much you know a regular plan can will cost you two and a half percent or one and a half percent or uh, one point seven five percent for it mm. uh, for other plans you know if you want to uh, you know for your goals go for a select uh, set and that come that works for you so what i'm uh, hearing from you is that uh, the investors should trim the portfolio of 15 or 20 funds they must yes. do that yeah they must do that and you mm. know it sh and 
it's good to have you know being a collector than not being an investor in the first place but it is better to organize hmm. your portfolio so that you know it is poised for achieving your goals uh, it is configured to you know achieve your financial goals and desirable kind most investors you know start with this drift something is right. an offer you start mm. investing but you know it's about time that uh, after a while you should organize things so that it is configured to perform okay what are the two ways in which uh, they should trim their portfolio uh most investors also actually many a times don't ask why they are investing uh, uh, and you don't need to mm. if you have surplus you invest uh, but it will be useful you know if you are able to ask one very simple question that what is the tentative time frame it is it less than 5 year or more than 5 year okay uh, that will be helpful hmm. and uh, if you if you think that you are unlikely to need this money for 5 years you can assume risk you can get organized and it can all be a long term portfolio depending on the time frame you know uh, you have been investing depending on your experience how long you have been investing all these years and mm -hmm. how comfortable or uncomfortable you are with the ups and downs of the market choose the appropriate vehicle i think you know most investors need will be fulfilled by uh, a first timer you know should be investing in an equity income fund or a balanced fund and be at it a uh, long term investor who can you know five years and more they should be considering a balanced fund one or two do your sip you have been through it ups and downs you are mm. not very uncomfortable be with multi cap funds maybe you would want superlative return maybe allocate 30% of your money to one small cap or a mid cap fund that should be it two or three funds will actually meet most of most investors long term need one or two multi cap or one or two okay. balanced fund and coupled with you know one mm. or two supplementary more aggressive funds that will actually do, uh, serve you better and i think the difference between a great fund manager who does well over time and a large number of uh, you know reasonably okay but average performers uh, it will it will actually show with with this in, uh, with with this and you are not compromising on it on on anything you are not compromising on diversification the problem of having the fifth fund is that you don't get anything meaningful okay most funds also have lot of complementary position if you look at the fund portfolio you will find that the top 5 10 holdings will be common across many funds for variety of reason you know one is that you know funds need liquidity and uh, thinking is not very different uh, large funds must mm. have you know every portfolio is mounted on a foundation of a, uh, of large cap stocks so from that standpoint you know avoiding the you know the complementary position lot of common things uh, you are many people have this impression that if you have 15 funds you are getting a very different array of things mm. 15 expertise no i think you know after the fifth fund uh, after the three four uh, third or fourth fund if you are having a similar kind of fund a similar category of fund you will actually be just diversifying without deriving any meaningful okay. value hmm. so while trimming the funds this is what you have said that they should have uh, yeah. four five funds how should they further trim the fund if they want to retain something should they look at the ratings should they look at uh, less than 5% of the portfolio value uh, funds should be removed Uh, would you like to elaborate on that aspect yeah i would say that you know one should start with you know our rating is very useful many a times people get attracted to our ratings that uh, five star fund is a investable fund hmm. i think you know the starting point of our rating should be that it actually helps you weed out losers and one star two star funds are the avoidable ones because okay. they have at least over the last 3 years they have not delivered superior risk hmm. they have underperformed on the risk adjusted performance it's a very simple quantitative mm. measure of risk adjusted performance uh, i would like to explain what risk adjusted performance which which is sounds like a jargon it, it is a jargon uh, that you know you invest you have every investor has uh, you know options to invest the simplest one is going to a bank and making a deposit and it costs nothing you don't have to choose anything you are guaranteed a certain return no anxiety nothing so that is your risk free return what what is a fund able to and i'm not talking in any any technical terms hmm. our risk free assumption is that what is the deposit rate available to indian cons consumers indian in savers uh, in state bank for a 45 day deposit because that is your opportunity cost if you do nothing you earn that much has a fund been able hmm. to deliver that return on a month on month basis and if you, if you know and what is that and uh, also the other thing which actually this rating system factors is how often the fund falls 
declines because our reaction to decline is far more intense we dislike losses more right. than we like gains uh, this is the primary thinking mm. so a fund gets penalized for falling more often and that these are two primary think you know basic uh, uh, element which is factored and then within a category we see that which has delivered you know which has been more consistent and which falls more less often mm. they get higher rating so there is a possibility that a fund has d- delivered superior return but it may not be a five star fund and as a result of this one star and two star turn out to be more uh, turn out to be the avoidable universe so that is the first filter when scaling down your portfolio once okay. you are left with you know those mm. then choose which is the most experienced fund manager right. how consistent it has been even in that and uh, choose the best of your universe you don't necessarily need to you know you don't need necessarily need to overall the whole thing uh, sell everything and buy everything unless you know you find that all your funds turn out to be one star and two star then might as yeah. well you know it is time to actually make a fresh start okay and uh, less than 5% of the portfolio value also you know, the funds with less than 5% of the portfolio value also needs to be yeah because you know i i'm i'm a strong believer that you know funds are not stocks when you are buying a fund you are effectively buying 30 stocks 40 stocks at one go correct uh, so having a 5% position in a fund doesn't make sense because every investor should be in, in interested hmm. in what he is investing in and when you have 5% it does well it doesn't have a meaningful impact on your portfolio hmm. if it does poorly then you are not interested you think you just hang on to it because uh, it is not meaningful so have meaningful interest okay uh, so that you act hmm. when it doesn't do well okay and it when it performs it has an impact it benefits and they should and they could redeploy the money that they um, have in the selected um, well yes. performing uh, i would say that you know look at your funds not the one star two star the good ones which you are left with choose even you know i would say that if your portfolio is large maybe four equity fund or f- three or four balanced fund or three multi cap fund and one mid cap fund three four funds should make a bulk of your portfolio hmm. and uh, realize that money and try and be equitable okay. uh, so that you have you know hmm. uh, a fund as well after all this hard work it should have an impact so will there be any tax or cost implications uh, while doing this yes there will be a cost and uh, you know there will be an impact of both but it won't be very significant because uh, all the gains that you have that you have on your mm. mutual fund till earn till january thir- 31st mm. 2018 that is tax sheltered on okay. all your equity funds the and the gains thereafter i don't think there will be too much gain thereafter uh, that will be uh, that will be taxable okay so but you have to make this uh, change do it because the tax implication will be nominal uh, one important thing is that all your investment which are less than 1 year old assuming that you are doing your sip for last 5 year you want to make these changes Mm. all your investment that has been made over the last one year will be gains on those units will be taxable so maybe stop your investments wait for those 12 months uh, wait your last investment to get 12 month older and then make these changes and uh, your new investment the money which you will save from stopping your investments right now that can start get depl- you know that can start uh, finding its way into the new fund that you have chosen as and when these get out of that taxation period you know short term capital gains because of course that is also not much there is mm. not much of a difference earlier it used to be you know 0 or 10% or 15% now the difference is 10% and 15% you will be liable for 15% 10% long term capital gains and 15% short term capital gains for your investment which are less than 1 year old so that is something which you should keep in mind uh, there could also be you know an exit load normally exit load of 1% is levied on funds which you redeem before one year so you will save okay. also on that so i would say that wait for that one year period stop your investments the ones you have decided not to invest any further move your money to uh, and the money which you will save which is finding it which is getting invested mm. right now into newer funds the funds which are more than one year old re- realize that the ones which you have to and consolidate everything into three four funds that should be good how much attention one needs to pay to the sebi's classification or should we take this up in some other program we will talk about it in great detail and uh, elaborate uh, yeah, a, f- a full scale it requires it has you know it's a complicated thing 
it has brought about many changes. Uh, but I would say that it has not simplified investors' life, which we talked about earlier in one of our pro uh, hangout session. But uh, more importantly, uh, funds will remain, you know, remain true to what they're stating in right. future in all times to come as a result of this. When a fund says that it is going to be a large cap fund, it will always remain a large cap fund. When a fund says that it is going to be a mid cap fund, it will be investing only in mid sized companies, it will it will do that always. Because uh, that has been taken care of well. Hmm. It has been defined nicely and they are supposed to. Otherwise, what used to happen so far is that a fund will start as a multi cap fund, then will at some point will become a large cap fund. Then it will become a small cap fund. It will change its track and we will never be able to figure out. Okay. So for investor uh, not to get into this trimming exercise, what should one keep in mind when one is building a, a fund portfolio in a nutshell? Uh, you mean somebody getting started? Yeah. If he's thinking afresh. Oh, that is pretty straightforward. And that will eliminate the, 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 the problems of, you know, uh, getting into things, you know, uh, without a plan. Uh, one is that the money which you need immediately or any time in future. The bucket system that we The have. bucket system that we said. So, you know, just follow that. Okay. The money with that you need any time, put it in an mm. ultra short term bond fund, liquid fund. Money that you need in a couple of years, uh, but definitely need it. Uh, don't take chances with that money. Don't, don't take any okay. chance with that money, you know. Put that money in a short term debt fund, that's about mm. it. And the money which you are unlikely to need for uh, five years and more, investing for the first time, start simply with a balanced fund one or two at most hmm. never invest lump sum that's the way to go and make those changes after three years maybe move to a multi-cap fund the money that has been accumulated in the balance fund can also move there but it's very important for investors to get used to it so the mantra is sips balance fund and then get into large uh, multi-cap multi-cap multi fund. funds and the idea for multi-cap fund is primarily that you know you are getting a full market exposure multi-cap hmm. funds can invest in Large companies, mid-sized companies, small-sized companies and different segments of the market do well dip at different points. So you will be doing okay and fund okay. manager will have all the flexibility. Okay. Um, we get on to the uh, Q&A session. We have a video question and if you want to send us the video question, you can do so. Okay. You can uh, write or send uh, your question in a video form here. Okay. We have... Um, Video question from uh, Pranita and uh, Dhirin. Let's see them. Yep. Currently, I'm invested in 13 equity funds and I would like to cut down on that number. But given the recent 10% LTCG tax, is it really advisable? Okay, Pranita says that um, I'm invested in 13 equity funds and I want to trim it down. Your advice? Yeah, take it. You will not be liable for too much of taxes. And as I said earlier, earlier yeah. how to go about doing yeah. it. Uh, that apart, hmm. uh, for the investment which are less than one year old, maybe if you are sitting on significant gains, on the, uh, which is unlikely because hmm. since the budget, things have moved around. But if your investments are less than one year old, uh, it is better to, you know, wait for that period because your gains till January 31st. 2018 is tax sheltered mm. but if you get out before if those investments are not one year old if they are not more than 365 days old then you'll be liable for 10 you know 15 percent short-term capital gains tax so mm. wait through that period make your investments more than one year older and then uh, and meanwhile invest your stop your SIPs and invest only in select few uh, selected ones from here on so that your investments are getting older and then make those switches Okay. Our next question is from A.K. Agarwal. We've been talking about uh, taking away one star or two star uh, two star uh, funds, but he says that he has 20 uh, mutual fund schemes with him and all of them are five star rated. <laughs> now, <laughs> how, uh, which one should he retain and which one should he get rid of? Uh, how yeah, but you know, that? Mr. Agarwal is not actually <laughs> mentioning one fact that they will be from different categories. Yeah. He will have variety of funds. And uh, so, congratulations, you have chosen good <laughs> funds of different yeah, no. kind. Uh, but it is about point, uh, about time. Maybe, you know, you should go to value research online, put these 20 portfolio, you know, you can just upload your CAMS portfolio. Uh, you don't have to type all your transactions and everything. Uh, and then you will actually find that how the aggregate, because different funds hold different things. What your portfolio is actually like, you know, what the, what the underlying portfolio is like, because you will have some 10 per 5 percent of your money assuming that you have invested equally in these funds 
all your fund holdings will be about 5 6% 7% <laughs> the ones which have done much better will be 10% mm. and the ones which have done poorly will be about 3% that is how how investments move so if you actually put that you will realize that you end up you will end up being a whether it be a multi cap mm. portfolio or a large cap portfolio because it will generate it will in the analysis tab you can see how your underlying portfolio looks like by virtue of owning these 20 funds and do a simple uh, you know comparison of the, on the on the performance uh, tab that which have done well what which funds actually account for a sizable part of your gains and uh, then take a call uh, 20 funds if mm. you have done it for 5 years you will get the answer in objectively looking at the at the performance sheet itself uh, what has done well what has not done well and get rid of your ones and uh, then you will actually be able to track things far more closely you will also be interested in those funds mm. uh, from here on right now we've been uh, recommending that we should have four or five funds here is this question from Biswajit and he says I thought the diversification will help me in hedging risk uh, diversification is important it definitely helps you spread your risk that is the whole idea of a mutual fund uh, but diversification beyond a point doesn't help in fact mm. it's it can well be you know diversification it's it gets worsened <laughs> then it dilutes your performance uh, and I think you don't necessarily add diversification by adding beyond five funds because after uh, unless it is of a completely different kind yes there will be diversification if you have three multi four multi cap funds and four small cap funds and that is how you want it to be by all means have it I'm generally saying it for common investors who want to keep things simple uh, keeping things simple is important mm. your tax calculation being interested uh, and uh, not diluting your your performance by because you just have too many f of them so diversification beyond a point translates into uh, dragging of your performance and dragging of your performance with a high fee of you know or, or a relatively higher fee of actively managed fund while if you have mm. to earn that average return might as well go for an index fund Ramakrishnan uh, has written to us saying how would fund reclassification impact existing investors do you see any negative impact yeah I see quite a few impact and uh, some of them will be negative uh, one is that you know existing investors uh, some funds will merge with other because fund com some fund companies have many similar kind of fund and that was the rational that was the mm. reason why SEBI wanted to standardize the classification so one fund company which has two balanced fund if it will become a very big fund because both, both right. if you have two balanced fund they have, they have been forced to merge it once they merge it it will become you know very large and uh, there is a problem of very large funds uh, you know funds which are very large because uh, it's called winner's curse you do well you get more money and once you get more money it gets hard to deploy or do well for mm -hmm. the reason that why you are doing well and it could be particularly counterproductive in certain strategies uh, for example the small cap funds or the mid cap funds if they become very big uh, the reason mm. why those funds succeeded in the first place is that they were able to assuming that there is a 500 crore fund and it built a portfolio of 25 stocks and it had to buy 20 crore worth of each stock to be diversified and buying a stock small cap small company mm. worth 20 crore is not hard uh, but then as you get bigger even if you and spotting those companies and they do well and the fund does well and your small cap fund becomes a blockbuster and as it becomes a blockbuster more people pour money into it and then now you have to look for 40 stocks because you can't buy those those kind of companies in large quantities mm. Indian markets lack the depth and if you have to look for 40 such ideas instead of 20 now as you turn from 50 500 crore to 1000 crore and when they become 10,000 crore it becomes very difficult for them and then it becomes a portfolio of a very long tail it will have you know some large position they will have to worry about the liquidity so uh, the, it, and it could be you know it could be an advantage in many categories for example large cap funds will not have this problem they can still build a portfolio of 40 stocks and the portfolio could be very big you know some 50 70 thousand crore of portfolio of a fund a fund with 50 70 thousand crore rupees uh, will can still be well managed it will have the liquidity big companies have that kind of liquidity you can sell a position of you know 100 200 crore any day without making any meaningful impact so 
some fund and they and that will trigger a economies of scale so small cap funds mid cap funds some mm -hmm. of the balanced funds uh, which will turn very big will be something to watch out for uh, other thing will be you know there will be a uh, small disadvantage if as a result of you know some funds will actually change their context some, some funds will uh, you bought a mid cap fund and now it is going to be uh, become a multi cap fund because the fund manager chose that you know mm. this will turn out better qualify as one so uh, and you do, you want a mid cap fund so you will be forced mm. to sell and move to uh, move elsewhere uh, that can trigger a short term capital gains so you will have to do that planning yourself either settle with that fund till it gets older stop your new money pouring into it uh, but apart from that but i don't see the, the, too many changes of that kind funds becoming big and some funds having mm. becoming too big uh, and they will have disadvantage these are two things to watch out for okay uh, john has written to us saying how to decide whether to stay invested or exit a mutual fund scheme which is being merged following the new sebi categorization ah uh, so i think you know I you pretty it, much answered uh, that, that you know if mm. it fund if a, a fund is of a kind where too big a fund will become a disadvantage consider you know that is a question which you have to seek an answer to okay and venkatesh says are the returns of big funds sustainable uh, will it be a good idea to switch to a well performing fund with significantly smaller aum uh many funds will actually be, you know depends on the category you know liquid funds short term debt funds mm. it's a scale business mm. bigger the better large cap funds bigger the better they will have economies of scale even multi cap funds uh there are two other categories large and mid cap and multi cap funds hmm. which has been provided in the classification system and uh, they will they will be able to sustain their performance because there the selectivity of the fund manager diversification the ample leeway to invest even in mid caps and small caps at appropriate times will be advantages i think mid caps and small caps will have a problem the the winners curse whatever they refer hmm. to when they do well they are faced with multi. a disadvantage mm. and then they find it hard they will find it hard but i think you know there are very few funds which will have this problem but over a period of time this will be a problem and the other thing is that you know we have the the other fallout of this ca uh, classification system which is good for investors that they will be really predictable earlier a fund used to start as a mid cap fund and mm. then it will become a large and mid cap fund as it turned big and then it will become a large cap fund uh and we have seen many funds uh, which have changed track because they they turn big uh they no longer will be able to do that a fund will have to ensure that what it has said that where it will be investing it will have to stick to that universe okay. large cap funds they have to invest in the top 100 companies only multi cap mm. funds they have to invest you know they can invest anywhere uh the large and mid cap fund there's a defined proportion of you know what will be large cap and what will be mid cap what percentage small caps they have to necessarily invest in small cap funds small cap stocks so it's very well defined you will have greater predictability the fund will behave exactly in the manner what you bought for fund will not change its track but you i heard the statement from you that small and mid cap funds will have a problem with when they turn big when they turn big yeah. so in that case uh, is there anything that the investor need uh, needs to do watch out for the size uh if you like the fund and mm. that was a 500 crore 1000 crore fund and it was doing very well uh i think some of those strategies will have to you know there will be concern that they, is it replicable is it sustainable mm. when they turn very big when they become 10000 crore 20000 crore and some funds will have this headwind quickly akhil says the rating of my fund has recently uh, been downgraded to 3 from 4 stars should i exit uh the rating has not been downgraded the fund has not done well so it earned you know lower rating mm -hmm. uh, in fact you you know we don't sit and downgrade things we just look at the numbers performance and then uh, performance risk adjusted mm. performance what i was saying mm. earlier so the fund got classified as a you know three star fund and i don't think you know uh, you should not jump on the change mm. of a rating uh, five star to four star you should not worry four star to three star keep an eye mm. uh, depending on the age of the fund i would say that if a fund which has which is young relatively 4 5 years old and a flip from a 5 star to 4 star to 3 star in quick succession you should not allow it more time wait for 3 6 months and take a call if a fund has done very well over last 15 years 20 years uh maybe allow it a year's time two years time and and during this period 
keep an eye that the fund manager is still there and uh, that should that's about it don't consider exiting this fund if it has just slipped from four star to three uh, Gurdeep says I'm a retired person with no pension how much monthly income can I expect by investing rupees 10 lakhs where should I invest uh, there are different kind of return you can expect from different categories but they will be they, they will be far you know depending on the kind of fund that you invest it will have greater degree of predictability or less predictability uh, the simple way is you know if you are willing to take if it is going to be a supplementary income you already you don't you are unlikely to depend right. on this investment for your primary income you already have a source of income whether it be a pension or a house rent or whatever then and you are willing to take chance maybe a hybrid fund or a equity income fund uh, i think uh, 6% return uh, is something which looks sustainable which will be because the invest the 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 way to approach investing for income uh, is m investing in a manner so that you derive a return and you are able to derive similar return uh, higher ret higher income uh, with with rising inflation you should have inflation protected income so 6% on your current capital will ensure that your 6% will get adjusted because if you mm -hmm. just take 6% and your fund earns 12% you'll have 6% more capital one year later and you'll be able to increase your income thereafter likewise uh, so you will because if you take constant income assuming that you invest in senior citizen saving scheme and you earn 9% uh, 8.3% 8, 8, 8 which, mm. which is what you get there and 8.3% and your capital remains constant so 5 years down the line your 10 lakh rupee will still earn 8.3% while inflation would have gone up by on an average 4 to 5% assuming conservatively so your need for income will be 30% more mm. and you cannot increase your income unless you eat a part of your capital so investing in a manner that your income is inflation proofed uh, you ha you'll have to assume this risk and 5 to 6% is something which looks sustainable with some of these hybrid conservative hybrid categories or maybe a little more with the aggressive hybrid categories but you have to be aware that you know these are market dependent returns uh, these are the general uh, this is the general expectation that I have that they will be able to beat inflation by a wide margin they will be able to generate more return than fixed income and so and only 6% withdrawal will translate into some capital being left to support your need for higher income. Well, Dharendra, that's uh, all that we can take in today's uh, Hangout. And uh, thank you so much thank you. for answering the queries and uh, giving us tips on how to trim a fund portfolio. Continue to invest. And until we meet uh, next time, take care of yourselves and that of your portfolio. Bye for now.